Hello, hello, good morning. This is Kasha and I want to talk about soul contracts today. I posted a question and I did get a couple questions back so I will address those. Um, but this is a topic that has been on my mind a lot because I recently discovered a soul contract. It, it's come up a lot in the work I do with women, especially the Akashic Records work. Um, and it often comes up in, in my coaching practice as well because I integrate both the Akashic Records readings into coaching and healing. And so obviously this stuff comes up as we work uh, through the things that um, that women you know need help with. So hey Eva, hey darling, how's it going? So I want to share about a, the soul contracts, but from mainly from the experience and the learnings I've received from the Akashic Records. So I've been working with the records. It's going to be about a, a I think two years now. I don't actually remember exactly when I dove in. Um, the records have been something that I've been aware of um, for a long time. I've had other people do readings for me, hated the experience, and then finally found an avenue where I could actually learn how to do it myself for myself. And that led to amazing um, healings for me. And then I was led to do it with um, with my clients, which is something I never intended to do. But you know, when spirit tells you to do something, you freaking listen, right? <laughs> Thanks, Eva. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. We had a session, didn't we? Yeah, I, I love that work. And so I want to talk about soul contracts because this is, you know, you could say it's become a buzzword a little bit, um, even though it isn't. And, and of course, the, the go-to authority, I would say, on this subject would be Caroline Mice. She's got a huge, fat book, Sacred Contracts. I have it. I've tried reading it several times. I just, I can't, I can't get through it. Um, it's just, it's not for me. And and that, you know, at first I was like, oh my gosh, there's something wrong with me. And, and the truth is, no, there isn't. The, the truth is there's more than one way to look at this. And the path that I have been led on to study, um, you know, angels, archangels, the, the Akashic Records, has always, um, it's always been reinforced to me that it's a, it's a very experiential path. There is no human being who is like the authority on this stuff because we simply, we live in the physical world. And yes, we can have deep meditations and there are threads of um, continuity, I guess, or threads of uh, similarities that run through all of this, but we can't really a hundred percent say that person knows what they're talking about. You know, like Doreen Virtue, for example, she's amazing, right? Her work has been groundbreaking for so many people, and yet I have always been led away from it. Um, so I'm not supposed to study with her. I'm supposed to study with others. I'm supposed to study through my own experience. And so the what I'm going to share about soul contracts feels true to the degree that I've been given this information through my own records and, and information that I've pieced together through the work I've done with women. So if it resonates with you, great. If not, yeah, Eva, exactly, right? We explore. If it doesn't resonate, then question it please um i would love your uh, your take on it your thoughts your intuitive hits on it because this is how uh, and this i know for sure we are here to experience ourselves in these bodies as human beings and we are we are god right we are the universe whatever you call it we're like little ziploc baggies of god and and by interacting, by questioning, by having conversations, we literally expand the the boundaries of who God is, what God is, right? What whatever um, the universe is. And so, I'm going to share with you. Um, I have some notes here. Let me just uh, find them. So if you see me looking off the screen, it's because I'm reading notes. Um, and then I'm I'm going to share with you some writing that I have done while in my own records. I um I actually have my records open right now as well. So I'm sitting in that energy so that I can be guided um, 
from that energy through that energy to say you know what it is that I'm meaning to say on this video so the, the main question that was asked when I uh, put the post up this morning um, let me just actually find it because of course I didn't write it down <laughs> Um, I think it was about like how do we find it how do we know how do you know discover what yours are and what can you do about it right so of course when we think there is you know when, when you hear the term soul contract right any type of contract it, it in um, implies being bound by something right we sign our name on our mortgage on our car insurance on all this stuff on you know even our marriage license if, if we get married and it's a contract that binds us to something and of course contracts are, are very useful but when we think soul contract it can at least for me it, it instilled like this this dread sort sort of right it, it, it was like Oh my God, what what did I sign? I don't know, what am I in for, right? I didn't get to read the fine print. And so, so I always thought these things were, um, to, were like to make us work harder, to make us, um, yeah, like the, the, con and so the contract that I'm specifically thinking of because it's the one that I've discovered and re recently resolved is suffering, right? So, so that was my whole frame of reference around these is I signed something before I incarnated so that I could come here and suffer and learn about suffering, right? Like how, how distant, sorry, my nose is really itchy. How awful is that? <laughs> how awful is that? So, um, through this work that I've been able to, to do with the Akashic Records, I've discovered that soul contracts actually aren't awful. They're, they're not as intimidating as I was you know, led to believe by trying to read Carolyn Mice's work because that book is this thick and it's so freaking heavy. Like it, it took me days to try and get through a page of it. So I'm gonna go to my notes here and, and I asked for guidance. Um, on how to talk about this in my own Akashic Records. So I'll just um, go through my notes. So we become aware of our soul contracts through the patterns that we notice in our lives. So for example, if you're someone who notoriously ends up in dead end relationships, let's say, or you um, constantly attract financial strain or, or trouble, or you are like a chronic people pleaser, or perhaps you even have some sort of chronic health issues, um, you, you probably aren't aware right off the bat that this is going on, right? You might think, okay, well, I just keep attracting, oh, thanks, Eva. <laughs> yeah, thick book problems, hey, no kidding. <laughs> we're not always aware of the patterns and cycles we run in our family, right? It's because, because we, we have blind spots. It's always a lot easier to notice them in other people. So like if your best friend comes to you and, and groans about like the next boyfriend that's a deadbeat or, you know, the next boss, she got a new job or he got a new job and, and it's like the, the same boss over and over again. Um, it, it's easier to notice these types of patterns. Now, soul contract patterns are not even that obvious because they permeate everything in our life. So we may, yeah, me too, <laughs> Eva, me too. Um, we may, you know, even become aware of, okay, well, I constantly attract like financial shit into my life. And this is, this has been my life. There's been a history of what I would consider poor decisions. Like we've even gone through bankruptcy, shit like that. And so, like I can I can tell the financial trouble because now that I'm aware of it and, and I can even do something about it, but a soul contract will subtly run through every area of your life. So so if I look at the soul contract of suffering that I just released, I not only felt like a victim in my financial um, slice of my life, but in being a mother, in the way I treat my body, in the way that um, you know where I live in the friends that I've had and lost in my work relationships when I used to work in corporate so now having this awareness of this soul contract 
I can look back at the, all the slices of my life pie and go, oh my God, it makes so much sense because I can see the thread of suffering in all of it. Now, the, the contract, and this is why you know, I went into my Akashic Records and I have this giant journal that I write in when I'm asking a question and when I'm sort of going through my thoughts. And what I wrote was, you know, I, um, I feel empty. Like this, this contract is supposedly resolved and, and I don't, I no longer feel this need to suffer or this thread of suffering in my day, but I still feel empty. What's that about? And so I'll get to that in a moment. Um, let me just make sure I'm not, I'm making sense here. So part of the, the, the uncovering of a soul contract is looking at the patterns in your life and the threads that, that bind them together, like the subtle threads that bind them together. But we are not actually here to find contracts and resolve them. Like that's not our job is what I'm saying. You can definitely do the work to find them. You can do the work to resolve them, but you don't want to make this your job. Does that make sense? Um, so often what can happen is you resolve a contract without even ever knowing you've had it. So when we incarnate, we have these, I'm going to say, instead of the word contract, I'm going to use the word theme. OK, we come here with a theme of what we want to focus on. So my theme contract wasn't to suffer in this lifetime. It was to learn how not to suffer and how what is the easiest way to do that? Well, you might think, well, it's to have a very easy life, right? Because then you learn what it's like not to suffer. But. The contrast of first doing all the things and feeling all the ways in which I did suffer in my life, or, you know, of course, this is like a perception, right? It's, it's all through our perceptions, beliefs, all the ways in which I perceived my suffering and now coming to a resolution for, for many reasons and now deciding what it means to not suffer right? This is where the learning comes. This is like where the juiciness comes, the goodness, the, this is where I get to really step into my power and decide and define what does it mean to not suffer? Like what is even, I don't even know because I'm so fresh out of it. What does it mean? Is, is there a, um, what's that word? Like what, what is, what's the word for opposite? There, there's, there's like the technical term for it, right? Like, what is the opposite of not suffering? I don't even know. So, so I have to define that, and that's where the fun begins. And so um, another example, for example, th that I can share with you, my, um, one of my girlfriends who I often do readings for, we, we do a swap on each other. She does body talk on me, and I do readings for her. One of her contracts that she became aware of was with her mother. There was a whole bunch of stuff going on with that relationship. And when she... Um, Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Shelly. Thanks, Eva. Um, so, so what my friend um, discovered was this this soul contract she had with her mother, and she chose my friend chose to to be done with it and to resolve it on her end. And now she gets to define what it means to live without that theme, that contract in her life. So, does that make sense? Um, the other part that I want to mention here is. Sometimes the contracts or the themes are just for ourselves. Sometimes they're with others. And in my friend's case, her mother is not yet at the point where she's ready to resolve her end of the theme, but my friend is. And so her part is done. And she now gets to choose and define and, and rediscover who she is, how she's going to live her life without that theme. But it doesn't mean that her mother is ready to do that. But that has nothing to do with my friend. Does that make sense? Hey, Tammy. Hey, darling. I'm so glad you guys are here. So the, the contracts, the themes, um, really have everything to do with us and what we choose and really nothing to do with other people other than 
other people help us mirror or help us notice these patterns, these themes that run in our life. Does that make sense? If you guys have questions about that, let me know. So like I said a few moments ago, sometimes you resolve these contracts without even realizing that you ever had them, right? When you when you um, choose to work on yourself consciously and create this, you know, your best life, become the best version of yourself, whatever the, the um, you know, typical way of saying that is, and you change the patterns and you fully embrace who you are, you love yourself fully, you're authentic with yourself, right, for your highest good, you resolve contracts without even ever knowing you had them because you don't actually need to know the pattern in order to change it. It's helpful. <laughs> Thank you for the hearts. Um, it's helpful, especially like if you're nerdy like I am, I like to understand. I like to know how things work, how I work, how my mind works. And so having the story of that theme, that contract in my life is really helpful for me to then be able to look at what I want instead. Like I said, went from suffering to not suffering. Now I get to define that. So um, the other thing though that I discovered as I was asking in my Akashic Records and, and getting ready to do this video, um, you don't, you're not under obligation to resolve any contract or any theme in any lifetime. OK, and that surprised me because, you know, the point of a contract, especially this type of, of contract where we're here to you know, learn and gain lessons and become divine and all that stuff. You would think, well, don't I want to like dig all of these up and don't I want to like find them all and then resolve them all? Like, how do I unsign my name? <laughs> but the, that's not the point. And that really surprised me. So the point is to. Yes, to become our divine, like the, the more, most divine version of ourselves in our human self. But but that's the journey. And so the resolution of a theme, a contract, so to speak, is part of that journey. And I hope this makes sense. Um, so when we resolve a theme, like I've recently resolved the suffering theme, our work doesn't stop, right? So, the, so there really is no arrival. And this is why it's, it's, if you make a job for yourself trying to dig out your contracts and figure them out and resolve them, it, it's, it becomes this addiction of, of like looking what's wrong with you as opposed to simply identifying what you think your patterns are and, and focusing on, on becoming the best version of yourself on what you do right, on who you are and how you love yourself on all those things that are right with you, that, are, that you're worthy already, that, you know, it's more of a practice of remembering rather than fixing. And so when you, just, let's say you do become aware of, of a bunch of patterns and you do become aware of, of the threads that bind them and you're like, okay, I'm pretty sure this is a soul contract or a theme that I'm here to, to work on. That awareness enough is enough for you to resolve it. Th that, that complete awareness, that's what it takes. But then, once you resolve it, like once, you, once it's done, you, the work isn't done. You need to keep going and now define what it means to not have that theme in your life. Who are you without that theme? Who are you, from, like for myself, who am I without the need to suffer? Who am I without this um, pervasive feeling of victimization that I've lived with. Does that make sense? Am I, I if you guys have questions or, or comments, let me know because um, it makes sense to me in my head. <laughs> so just let me know if I'm if this is clear. So discovering the theme, yeah, exactly, Eva. So you got to continue and keep doing the work, but now the work becomes even more. You, you're simply more aware of your focus. So you become more focused on becoming that divine version of yourself rather than how do I, you know, how do I figure out what's wrong? So I'm going to read to you what I received from my records because I think it really explains this, um, this concept. It says, 
Um, so first they said, the way to fully resolve this contract of no suffering and thriving is to choose to rise out of this defeat and create. It's okay if you don't want to. There is nothing wrong with simply living with the awareness of this contract and choosing whatever path seems easier to you. You know yourself and your tenacity and you will emotionally and you will emotionally turn on yourself so so that they know me right this is these are my records and so they they're basically calling me out on this saying if you choose the path of ease like not ease like the easiest path of you have this theme of suffering you can live with it you can continue to live with it there's no obligation to resolve it and you can continue to suffer but knowing me, knowing that I like I wouldn't be happy with that, I will emotionally turn on myself and I will put myself down and continue to perpetuate that suffering. So then they said, you get to choose your own path and your response and how you feel about it. The right path is the one you won't use as a stick on yourself. So like a, a beating stick, right? So you have to look at what's authentic for you, for me. There is no obligation to resolve the contract in a period of time. It's whenever you're ready. Do what feels true from, from like an authentic truth, right? Not so, so you can't pretend here. Not because you're doing it from a victim or a hurt place. Don't use change as a stick to beat yourself with. There is no punishment for not changing other than what you create. And so I was like, okay. So that gave me a, a way better understanding of these soul themes or soul contracts is we're not under obligation to resolve them at all. We're, we're under, and, and it's not even an obligation. It's a, it's an invitation from the divine because the divine is pure, absolute love and it loves us. And, and getting to a place of being a divine, like aligning with your highest divinity is simply loving yourself the way the divine loves you. And when you can do that, then all contracts fall away anyway, because when you love yourself fully, then you can um, treat yourself, you know, the best way possible, right? You treat your body, your mind, everything for your highest good. You treat others. For your highest good so so then you're simply a nice person right I hope that makes sense um, so let me go back to my notes here um, yeah so so we don't the work doesn't stop after we become aware of the of a contract and I think that is a misconception that I lived with for a very long time I thought well if I could just dig out all my soul contracts figure out what they are like resolve them sign on the dotted line that okay got it I know then everything will be hunky dory and that's not that's not the point the point is awareness of a soul contract or a soul theme only helps us to focus our energy on what we want more so my awareness of this theme of suffering and now not suffering puts the onus back on me to figure out what does that mean to me how do i live my life how do i align myself with my highest divine self and not suffer right how do I thrive I guess maybe thriving would be the opposite of suffering so my work like it feels like now my work is really starting because I no longer have the pressure of trying to figure out what it was that I felt was stopping me now I simply get to create and so um, but but I could have simply created without ever trying to figure out what was stopping me does that make sense um, so how do we then um, where do we go from here like once you once you become aware of a soul theme or not where do we go from here well really it, it comes back full circle to telling yourself the truth totally loving yourself by treating your body your mind your spirit as best as you possibly can practicing habits and rituals that make you feel good and and are true to you being a good human, being a nice person, right? And doing all of that for you, not because you think you need to be a good person for others, right? So doing it because it fills you up, not doing it at your own expense, which I was notorious for, 
for that because I was, you know, I, I was under this perceived obligation to suffer. And so even when I would do something for someone else, it was often at my own expense. So again, just to reiterate, you don't need to feel obligated to resolve a soul contract or a soul theme because it's, it's just something that is creating contrast in your life that you can notice that will help you align back to what you actually want. It's giving you that contrast to know exactly what you don't want so that you can come back and know what you do want. And that takes a lot of courage, right? It, um, it absolutely does. But if you are aware of, of a contract or if, if you are aware of themes in your life or patterns that, you're, that you have, you don't want to let those become an excuse for staying stuck. So awareness is like a double-edged sword, right? It, it creates, um, it, it gives us more power to choose, but it also can give us a really big stick to beat ourselves with if we aren't in a place where we feel we're ready to choose. So really, really my, be mindful of how you use that awareness. Um, and the contract, you really, you know, and... and I don't know if this is the answer you wanted to hear, but you don't have to seek them out. You, you don't have to take a shovel and go digging in your subconscious or digging in your emotions um, because it will seek you out and, and it will come to your awareness through the work you do on yourself. So if you're someone who is committed to living your best life, to thriving, to loving yourself as much as possible, to being a nice person, to being a good human, right, to raising your own vibration, all the shit that is standing in the way of that is going to show up. Don't worry. It'll find you, right? It's, it's basically like if, if, you, um, if you can imagine a jar of honey that's been shaken up and there's a bunch of air bubbles in it. It's very dense and the air bubbles take a really long time to rise to the surface. But as you work on yourself, as you raise your vibration, as you release your shit, your limitations, all that stuff, it's almost as if the honey becomes less and less dense until it becomes water, right? It becomes like the, the viscosity of water and then the bubbles just rise to the top, which means all the crap that's stuck inside you will just come up. So you don't have to go digging. So, you know, the whole soul contract buzzword, it can be very intimidating, but I hope that by explaining what I've learned about it, I've, I've, demystified that a little bit and made it a little bit less intimidating um, and and dispelled maybe some fears that you've had about these soul themes that they're not here to keep us down they're not here to make us suffer they're not here to make our life miserable they're here to give us a point of focus on um, what we need to work on and the reason why you know some things feel so easy is because chances are you've already been there, done that in past lives. You've resolved it, right? It's just, it's simply, it's not an issue. For me, that's my marriage. I have, my husband and I have the most amazing, easy relationship. And it, it's like, obviously there's, you, you gotta put in the effort, but it doesn't feel like work. So I know that that type of relationship is, is not a theme I'm working on because it's just easy. And everyone has one of those, right? For you, it might be finances. Like maybe your financial life is so easy for you and you just thrive in it. So you know that that's not anything you need to focus on. Perhaps for you, it might be your health or fitness, right? You're just someone who's naturally able to keep their body in top shape and top health. And that's easy for you. Whereas someone else might be having a really hard time with that. So I invite you, if you want to explore this, I'd be more than happy to do an Akashic Records um, session with you or a series of them because, you know, if it's really weighing on your heart and you feel like you've been stuck under this theme and, and it's really like no matter what you do, you can't seem to dig out from under it, then by all means, ask for help, right? I'm, I didn't say all this for, to, to tell you, like, don't worry about it ever. If it's something that's weighing on your heart, then it's worth looking at because you can become aware faster. You can get help to, to clear your limiting beliefs, your limiting perceptions, all those things when you're ready, when you feel like you want to do that. So I'm here for you if that's something that 
um, that you're interested in doing, let's chat about it. Or if you know someone who you think would could use it because it's weighing on them, then let's connect. Other than that, if you have any questions, and for those of you watching the replay, thank you so much. And if you have any questions or if anything I've said was unclear, please leave a comment, a question, and I will um, pop back in and answer. So there you go, soul contracts. Um, wishing you an amazing day. I'll see you soon.